Hi there, I'm Dan and I am a Bimmerholic. My problem started out small when I bought a 2002 back in my college days, but since then I just can't help myself. I bought over 25 BMWs since. Now, it's been four years since I bought my last new BMW. Well, two if you count the last used one. And this is a tough habit to break because I'm surrounded by enablers. This is my 2016 BMW M2. And today I'm going to tell you why it is such a special car. Now I'm not going to become the next Doug DeMuro. I suspect that he shoots and edits on something a lot more sophisticated than an iPhone. This video was inspired by a Facebook group called Review Your Own Car. It was started by Johnny Valencia and Amy Shackelford with the idea to help us get out and share our passion for cars virtually while we're unable to leave our homes and get together at car shows and other types of events. You can see these personal car reviews at hashtag review YOC, as in your own car. But today you get a bonus because I'm going to do two car reviews in one. In addition to my M2, I brought my BMW E46 330i performance package. So I'll tell you about both of them today. We'll start this review with my M2. This is one of the first that was built for the US market back in 2016. And the concept of the M2 had already been explored by BMW's one series M Coupe, popularly called the 1M, which was an incredible car built in very small volume. So today, the 1M uh, in really good condition, they will sell for more than they did when they were brand new. That won't happen with the M2 because they built a whole lot of these. There's been quite a bit of demand. But what BMW did was to take their smallest body shell and add to it a lot of M components from the M3 and in the case of this car, also the M4. It has the suspension with the wide track of the M3 and the M4, the wheels, the brakes, the electronic M differential. All of the important suspension bits come from the bigger M cars. But put into a smaller package, it has a shorter wheelbase and it's a lot lighter. So it has a whole different level of performance, even in the M3 and the M4. Now, in the first three model years, the M2 was available in four colors, black, white, gray, and this is called Long Beach Blue. Now, M colors are named after Formula One tracks, and Long Beach Blue is named after the Long Beach Grand Prix track that in the 70s and 80s hosted Formula One. And this car and this color are both a bit more special to me because I actually got to see Formula One cars driving through the streets of Long Beach back in the day. There's already a great review of this car's successor, the M2 Competition. And it's been improved over this car in every measurable way. But there are two things I actually like better about the original M2. One is it's a bit lighter, weighing in at under 3,500 pounds with a manual transmission. Since the M2 Competition has a twin turbo engine instead of the single turbo in this car, and it has liquid intercooling and more uh, bracing to the chassis. All that adds weight, adds a lot of good performance as well, let's be honest. And like many people, I also like the sound of this car better. The twin turbo S55 engine in the M2 competition, the M3 and the M4 has kind of a raspy exhaust sound that's not everybody's taste. So I've left the stock exhaust system on this car because I just love the way that it sounds. I've also kept my other modifications to a minimum you can see the M Performance rear spoiler made out of carbon fiber that's been added. I've also uh, changed the springs to H&R Sport springs that lower the car by about 15 millimeters. And that combined with the 
10 millimeter larger tire size that comes on the M3 and the M4 uh, fills the wheel wells a little bit better, which is something that I like. From the M Performance Parts catalog, I've also added this uh, M Performance steering wheel with the Alcantara hand grips and the color matched stripe at the top. So I always know where straight ahead is. And as a personal modification, I put some M colored stripes over here on the other side above the carbon fiber. And the M2 is so much fun to drive. It's quick, it's nimble, it sounds great. With the manual transmission, it's a lot more engaging in my opinion. Now I kept an E46 M3 for 11 years, waiting for something to be produced by BMW that I thought I would like more. That was a fantastic car. And I can say that the M2 lives up to everything I was hoping it would be. It's like an E46 M3, which some say is the pinnacle of the M3 models, except it has a lot more torque and a lot more electronic toys to go with it. But what makes this particular M2 very special to me is the way that I got it. Back in 2016, that was the 100th anniversary of BMW. And so a group of friends and I decided to commemorate it in a very special way by doing an M tour. We did a group European delivery of 11 M2s, two M3s and two M4s at the BMW Welt in Munich. And while there, we were able to tour the BMW Milbertoffen factory. We went to BMW Classic, where they keep the archives of BMW's history. We went to the BMW Museum, and we had a private tour at BMW M in Garching. It was an incredible time in Munich, and after we left there, we headed south to the Italian Dolomite Mountains and the Swiss Alps to get our break-in miles done on our cars. After those 1,200 miles, we took them to a BMW dealership in Stuttgart for the M service that's required before you can truly get out and enjoy these cars. And enjoy them, we did. We topped them out on the Autobahn, but more importantly than that, in the second week that we were in Europe, we were able to do three track days. We went to the infamous Nürburgring Nordschleife on the bucket list for any car enthusiast. We went to the Zandvoort track in Holland. And for my personal bucket list, we went to the Spa Francochamp circuit in, uh, in the Ardennes Mountains of Belgium. So it was an incredible experience. Each of our cars was able to get three track days in in Europe before they made it back home to the US. So as impressive as the M2 competition is, none of them come with the memories that I have with this car. And after four years of owning it, every time I get out on the road to drive it, it still puts a big smile on my face. Moving on to my other BMW, this is an E46 BMW 330i with the performance package. That's an option that was only made available in North America because in the E36 chassis, BMW offered a sedan version of the M3 that was very popular in North America, but didn't sell very well in the rest of the world. So they didn't build a successor in the E46. For the North American market, though, they decided to build a higher performance version of the E46. This was, to me, the first car that had the concept that BMW now uses as its M performance line, a half step in between the highest end of a particular range and the actual M car version. Today you can get an M240, an X4 M40i, an M850i, but each of those cars has a full-fledged M version above it. So this is the first car that kind of fit that idea. And what they did to up the performance a little bit uh, for the engine, 
They got 10 more horsepower by changing the cams, by raising the red line a little bit, and uh, by changing the engine management software. 10 more horsepower, seven more foot-pounds, Hard to get a lot more power out of a naturally aspirated engine, but they managed to get a little bit more. But beyond that, they tightened up the suspension a bit. And for the straight line performance, one of the most significant things BMW did was to change the final drive ratio. So the zero to 60 time came down to less than six seconds. As with the current M performance cars, there are also some styling changes. BMW put on a different uh, front bumper cover they added unique 18 inch wheels. The side sill was changed. They went to lower profile tires and a lower ride height, which made them a bit more distinctive. In the back, they got a rear spoiler on the trunk and a slightly louder exhaust system and a rear bumper cover that included a bit of a diffuser. These performance package 330s have a very passionate following and they're lovingly known by their BMW option code ZHP. So that means you've got a 330 with the extra performance and cosmetic additions and these were available in, in a sedan like this car or also as a coupe or a convertible. It was the first non-M3 series to get a six-speed manual as an option. And in the interior, the shift boot and the parking brake boot are made of Alcantara, as is the steering wheel, except in the final year, 2006, when the high wear rate of the Alcantara and the steering wheel uh, caused BMW to need to replace several of them, so they went to a perforated leather. They also have an interior trim in an aluminum black cube, either available in the black, as in this car, or a silver. This particular ZHP is the fourth one that I've owned. I bought my first one when they were brand new. I did the European delivery program and I got to stretch its legs on the Autobahn and I got to drive it on the Nürburgring. The best way to experience a brand new car is on European delivery. But uh, as many BMWs as I've owned since that first car in 2004, I just keep coming back to buying another ZHP because I absolutely love the nimble handling, the uh, quick responses, the very accurate steering that BMW hasn't been able to duplicate since then. And I love this one in Imola Red. In another first for BMW, the ZHP is the first non-M model that was offered in a true M Color. Imola is the name of the Formula One track in Italy, and since it's you, a unique color to the ZHP, it's probably the most coveted paint color in these cars. I've kept this ZHP completely stock because I rarely get to drive it, and it's really a throwback to an era when BMW stood alone for producing cars with an incredible feel with great performance that you can enjoy every day. So I feel very fortunate to have this pair of BMWs in my garage. Though both of these BMWs are separated by more than a decade, they have something important in common. Neither one is the fastest BMW of its day, but both emphasize razor sharp handling, probably the best tactile sensations when they were built. It's something you can experience every day, making them so rewarding to drive. As BMW puts it, sheer driving pleasure. I'm really looking forward to the time when we can all see each other in our cars again. Stay healthy, everybody.